Stanford University. People want to know what are the biggest challenges that you face in neuroscience and are they scientific, are they ethical, are they political, and what are they? What are the challenges in neuroscience? I think the biggest challenge facing neuroscience right now is how to understand the brain in terms of interacting, functioning circuits. So sets of cells in the brain make chemical or synaptic interactions with other cells in the brain. Uh, certain groups of cells function together in circuits to perform certain computations or to mediate certain behaviors. And those circuits will interact with other circuits to create systems. And how we actually go about understanding the brain at a circuit level and the relationship of circuit activity to behavior and to cognition, I would say that's the biggest single challenge in neuroscience, the single scientific challenge. But let's break it down a little bit more. It's actually worth thinking about carefully. What do you need to know in order to understand a circuit? And I think of this as a table with four legs. So there are kind of four pillars that the table stands on. And the first pillar is just a structural map. So let's imagine you live here where I do in the Bay Area. And if you want to get from Palo Alto to Berkeley, the first thing you want to do is open a road atlas and just see which roads connect to other roads. I just want a static map. Give me a map, for crying out loud, of how the things connected together. But if I want to go from Palo Alto to Berkeley at 4 in the afternoon versus 12 noon or midnight, I gotta need more information than just that static map. You want to know what traffic is flowing on which road at any given moment in time, right? We call that dynamics in the nervous system. We want to know what signals are flowing along different nerve pathways. So that's the second leg. The third leg is that if you're a traffic engineer and you really want to understand how the system of roads and traffic is working, you want to be able to manipulate or perturb the system. You want to know if I shut down this bridge or I shut down this road, where are the signals going to go after that? How is it going to have system-wide effects and what's the behavior of the system going to be? Fourth one is maybe a little less intuitive, but it's really important and it's theory. It's what I call theory and computation. Unless we develop a theory about what this entire system is for, and what its overall purpose is, and how the activity of the individual uh, components fit into this purpose and into this, in, into this overall function, we will never understand the system. So no amount of data collection will help you understand the system unless you have an overall theory about what its purpose is and what it's trying to accomplish. And if you prop all these four legs up at one time and you just let go of them, they're all gonna fall over and hit the floor. You've gotta have a tabletop on top of those four legs in order to hold this thing together and give it structure and integrity. And that tabletop is behavior. You have to remember that nervous systems evolve to produce behavior. So when we talk about the challenge of circuits, I see it as challenges in developing maps, challenges in measuring the dynamics, challenges in perturbing the system at finer and finer levels, and challenges in developing theories. And the great news is that we're making huge progress on all four of those fronts right now. Um, in my lifetime, there has never been a moment like this one in terms of its potential for an inflection point, a fundamental change in the speed and acceleration of discovery. And that inflection point is occurring because we have amazing new technologies that are allowing us to make measurements of the static map and make measurements of the dynamics and make perturbation uh, experiments that we've just simply never been able to do before. So on the one hand, we have these massive challenges. On the other hand, we have these fantastic new tools that are going to help us meet those challenges. So I'm extremely optimistic about being able to, to deal with the challenges despite the extraordinary complexity of this three pounds of uh, circuitry that sits between our ears. Stanford University.